Have you ever met someone that seems absolutely perfect? I'm talking beautiful, smart, funny, intelligent, successful, kind, but there's this one thing, this tiny little thing that actually could ruin all of it. That is my story today. And I want to talk about that with you guys because a while back I did a video about my deal breakers in dating and all my deal breakers were pretty standard. I don't like liars, I don't like cheaters, stealers, Pittsburgh Steelers. I think I pretty much covered all the standard bases for the things that are deal breakers in relationships, but there are other sets of deal breakers or things that are just really, really big problems that I don't really know if they constitute as deal breakers. I dealt with this when I went out with this guy for a couple of months a long time ago in a galaxy far far away. Have you guys seen Star Wars yet? Let me know how it was. In a galaxy far away, in New York City, there was a gay boy named Travis. Me. And I met someone that I really liked a lot. But the problem was, the worst problem, oh, oh Jesus, oh. The worst problem was that he had terrible, terrible breath. Mm. So today, guys, I'm going to tell you the story about the time I went out with someone who had really bad breath and exactly what happened from that. Before I begin that, though, I have a question for you guys. If you meet someone that seems absolutely perfect in every single way, except they have really, really terrible breath, is it a deal breaker or do you just deal with it? Let me know down below because I want to know how you guys would respond because this was a very challenging time for me, despite the fact that it seems very small. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about that today. But before I do that, I just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, who also also, not ironically, can help you out with bad breath, the Dazzle Pro Toothbrush. I have talked about the Dazzle Pro Toothbrush before with you guys because it is a really awesome toothbrush. You want to use an electric toothbrush because this toothbrush brushes 40,000 strokes per minute versus 300 that you do with a manual toothbrush. It has four different settings on it from clean to soft to whiten to massage. Apart from the toothbrush itself, what makes the Dazzle Pro especially special is the little dock that they have right here in this little case. Now in this case, you can't see it because it's not plugged in, but there's a light. It's a UV light that sanitizes your toothbrush heads when you're done brushing. So once you're done brushing, you just take off the head, you put it in this little dock, you close it, and a light turns on and sanitizes your toothbrush. If you're a germaphobe like me, you're gonna love this thing because it kills 99% of bacteria. If you don't have something like this with your electric toothbrush, then you're just putting bacteria back in your mouth, which totally defeats the purpose of brushing your teeth to keep them clean anyway. I started using this and it feels basically like I left the dentist's office every single morning. So I wanted to share this with you guys because it is a really great toothbrush and because I'm featuring it in this video, you guys can get it for 40% off. If you use the discount code Travis Dazzle at the link down below. So check out the link down below. Get the Dazzle Pro for yourselves. Now guys, I'm gonna tell you this story. So, let's begin. All right guys, so this story begins in New York City. When I first moved there, when I first started modeling, I wasn't making ends meet, and so I had to start catering in order to make the rent. Now with catering, every single week I would get paid with a check, and then I would take that check straight to Chase Bank and deposit my check. So one Friday, I went to this bank to deposit my check, and the line was like out the door. It seemed like everyone in New York City was getting paid that day, so I was just gonna have to wait for 45 minutes to deposit my check, and so that's what I did. I stood in line for about five minutes, when someone came up and tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, I can help you over here. This was a very, very attractive man. And he's one of the personal bankers at Chase. He's not one of those tailors that us peasant folks normally get to see when we have to wait behind the counter and they have bulletproof glass between us. This is one of those people wearing the suits that usually just lets me walk on by because they know my poor ass don't have any money. And so of course, I follow this guy out of the line over to his desk. And of course, they have like this little private cubby desk. So it's kind of a little bit more intimate. And he's sitting there saying something about like, you know, my savings account and uh, uh, AP. I don't know what the f he's talking about to be honest because I'm absolutely smitten by this attractive man So he's sitting there saying something like APR zero interest savings and I'm sitting there like mm-hmm Mm-hmm uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, you better deposit it. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't even paying attention to the damn thing he was saying. So sure enough, by the end of that conversation, not only had I deposited my check, but then I ended up leaving with a savings account, two credit cards, and a personal loan. Oh, Lord, I wish I would have thought twice about that. So I left that bank that day and I went home thinking I would never see this Zachary person again. I don't know if I said his name was Zachary, but it was Zachary. So the next day I get a phone call from Zachary who calls and he's like, Hi, Travis. I just wanted to see how your experience was with us yesterday at Chase. Uh, it was good. Great. I just want to make sure that I gave you all the services you need yesterday. Lord, I can think of a service or two you can give me. It was kind of weird to have the banker himself call me, but I figured, you know, that's what you do when you're a personal banker or whatever. But I was still a peasant, so I don't know why he was helping me. And so I was like, yeah, yeah, the service was great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. As we're getting ready to hang up, he's like, hey, also I was wondering if maybe 
you'd like to grab drinks or dinner sometime. So naturally, of course, I said yes. Zachary was like, I don't know, like 25, 27, I don't even remember at this point, it's been so long. But we ended up going out to dinner. At dinner, you know, it's a really great date. I had been dating some not so great people around this time, so he was really a breath of fresh air. Uh, kind of. So we go out to dinner, we go for a walk around the park, and he walked me all the way home. He walks me to my door, and you know, it's like the moment it's the whole night's been building up to. I wasn't going to hook up with him, I wasn't really in the mood to hook up with him, but a goodnight kiss seemed appropriate considering the date that we had. We're talking, small talk, it's kind of building up to that moment when I know he's leaning in to get ready to kiss me. Everything is perfect, I'm so excited about it. So then finally, I brace to end the perfect night with a kiss, so I close my eyes and I pucker my lips. Cause that's exactly how I get ready for a kiss. He leans in, and his lips touch mine. And as we're kissing, he opens his mouth and it starts to get a little bit more heated, but then suddenly, I stop. What the f is that smell? Love Jesus, it smelled like a family of skunks ate a bunch of Doritos and had beer farts up in his mouth for the last 20 something years. Love Jesus, what the f is that smell? And so I pull back like, whoo! La, all right. And he's like, hey, I had a really good time with you. And I'm like, yeah, me too. I really, I look forward to, I look forward to seeing you again. Oh my God. And so I leave, I shut the door and you know, I throw my back against the wall. I take my heels off and I throw them across the room. Take off that pearl necklace. Why Lisa, why? But you know what? I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I said, you know what? This is probably just an off chance. He probably had a bad night. That's what it was. It must have been the lobster and the butter covered scallops. So anyway, I had a really good night and I wasn't going to let that ruin the night. So we make plans to see each other again because obviously everything else was perfect. We go out a couple of times later. I soon realize at the end of the night after we kiss a couple more more times that that's just the way his breath smells. This very quickly became a very big problem for me because every part of getting to know Zachary was a really great experience. But there was this really big problem because I did not want to do anything intimate with him because his breath was so, so bad. You can't just leave someone because they have bad breath. I think that's a really messed up thing. That's super shallow. I didn't want to do that. I liked him a lot. So I was trying to figure out ways to make this work. Lord, I was getting resourceful with it too. He'd be lying there and sleeping. I'd be pouring some mouthwash in his mouth, you know, just Sometimes he'd be like, what do you want to do tonight? Want to go see a movie? And I was like, you know, actually I was thinking that maybe we could just brush our teeth. And he's like, okay, well, what do you want to do after we brush our teeth? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, let's just see how long we can go. Why, why stop at two minutes? You know, why don't we do it at 15? Why don't we two hours or two days? And so I brushed my teeth all day with him. I was brushing them all the damn time. My gums were raw, but I didn't care because I was trying to help this man. Sometimes I just take that toothbrush and just brush myself. Cause I'm like, you are missing something. You are missing something up here. I'm gonna make you smell good. But nothing worked. I was actually honestly really unhappy because this was the only problem I had with this guy. And it was the first time I ever dealt with something like this. It didn't seem right to me to leave this person, so I prayed to Jesus really hard, and that's when I remembered the biblical quote, Somebody help me, tell me what to do from here, cause even thugs cry, but do the Lord care? I think that was actually Tupac. So one night, Zachary and I go out to dinner, and I decide I'm going to have a talk with him. And for some reason, the energy is very off that night. We're like not lining up at all. There's kind of tension between us, and I think that it's all because of me. So we have this awkward energy throughout the night. Lots of awkward silences, and it's killing me because I hate that so much. Finally, at the end of dinner, I said to him, Zach, I think we need to talk about something. You know, he kind of wipes his mouth and puts his napkin on the table, and he goes, Sure. Uh, what about? <sighs> I've had a really, really good couple of weeks with you, and I've really, really enjoyed our time together. As I'm leading in with this very positive intro, Zach interrupts me. Hey, actually, I have something I need to talk about with you first. Uh, okay. Now in this moment, I thought for sure this man was going to propose to me. Who oh, love Jesus, you going to make me his wife. And this was all so soon, you know, we've been together for three weeks, but you know, being the crazy that I was back then, I thought, you know what, this could be a really good story. Huh? And so I just waited for him and I was like, oh my God, what's he gonna say? So I closed my eyes, getting ready for him to pop the question. And then finally he said, Listen, Travis, I really like you a lot too. Mm -hmm. And I've also had a lot of fun getting to know you these last few weeks. Mm -hmm. But I don't think this is worth it. Uh, uh, excuse me? Yeah, I've had a lot of fun getting to know you these last few weeks, but it just seems like we don't have a lot in common and our goals are kind of different right now. So I just, I know this might be hard, but I just think it's best we see other people. <laughs> now secretly, in my heart, I'm like, yes! Yes, Lord Jesus! Yes! I ain't gotta kiss that stinky man's breath not one more time! But of course, in that moment, I had to keep my composure, so I said, oh, really? Damn. 
Ah. Listen, I hope you're not mad. No, no, I'm, I'm not mad. I mean, I'm just disappointed. Yes. I could not have been happier that this man broke things off with me. Whew, I thought I was going to be damned to an eternity of bad halitosis. Obviously, I would have dealt with that for the right person because if you're a good person, I don't see why you can't work on that with your partner. But I guess for whatever reason, he wasn't willing to work on whatever disconnect we had, which was totally fine because obviously I ended up where I am now. So that concludes my story time, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Also, check out that Dazzle Pro. 40% off if you use discount code Travis Dazzle at the link below. But I guess that's all I have for right now. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.